this week, we are talking about figure eight pools. Um, so, so I'll give a broad um, rundown. So it's right down at the southern end of the Royal National Park. Um, many of you probably know roughly where it is, um, near Burning Palms Beach. Uh, and it's, it's quite a, it's basically a rock shelf, quite a dangerous rock shelf um, in quite a remote part of the park. Um, so accessible from the coast track, but a bit of a deep, quite a bit of a detour. And the only way to get there is to hike into it. Um, I've often seen people sort of come to the start of the track and say, kind of, where's the bus to figure eight pools? Well, no, you've got to hike a pretty decent track, um, about seven kilometres to get to it. So that's the first thing to know. Obviously, it's um, Instagram worthy. So there's a lot of tourist traffic, people going down there to take their selfies and the weekends are notoriously very busy so time to avoid as much as possible and they've had lots of problems with people going down there uh, emergency services are always down there trying to cater for people that aren't prepared for what it has to offer but we wanted to sort of tell you about it so that it's it's very doable um, but you just have to plan and be aware of the risks and the dangers there's a couple of ways of getting down there. The, the, the shortest and the most ex accessible way is um, where you start at Garawarra Farm, which is inside the National Park. So in so you enter in the National Park and you get to the turn off to Gary. And as soon as you take that turn off to Gary, there's a quick uh, right and that takes you along a dirt road to a car park, a Garawarra Farm uh, car park. And you can buy, you have to buy a uh, your National Park pass there for $12 or you can have bought it down at um, Audley beforehand but you definitely need it and they police it so don't ever try get away with it. Um, it's uh, They definitely are there because they know it's a very popular spot for people to be parking and trying to get away for it with their $12. So if you park there, there are toilet facilities there and that's where you can start the uh, figure, of eight, figure eight pool walk. It's all quite well signposted, a lot of warning signs there just to make you aware of a few things. And you basically can, um, that's one way of getting there. Joe's going to go into a little bit more detail about the actual track in, um, uh, in a moment. The other way, which is a slightly longer, well, twice as long actually, walk is, and that way you don't have to actually start in the National Park and that's starting from Otford. So if you have no public, if you don't have a car, that's how you can get there by public transport. You catch the train to Otford Station, walk up to Otford Lookout, and then you can start along the coast track and go down Burning Palms um, and you can get there that way. It's it's twice as long, it's about a 14K in and out from, um, from if you want to start at Otford. So I'll talk about the terrain. Um, so you're basically starting at the top of the, the escarpment. You've got to make your way all the way to the bottom. So it's a steep track. There are sections of it that are boardwalk, sections of it that are well-maintained with steps, and then other sections that are not so well-maintained. So whether you go from Garawarra Farm or you go from Otford, um, while the Otford one's longer, the Garawarra Farm's maybe slightly less um, rugged, but they're both a steep climb down, which ultimately means a pretty steep climb back out. Um, so for any of our trek training girls, it's no, no drama at all. But if you're taking a friend that's never done any hiking before, um, they need to be aware, making sure they wear the right footwear and aware that it's a, a steep climb back out. Um, once you get down to the Burning Palms Beach, this is where you have to turn off and head south around the rock, um, a rocky shoreline. shoreline. Um, and it's, a, it's not so much a rock scramble as a rock walk. Um, so you need to have good balance um, and be sure footed. So, you know, there's a potential there for twisting an ankle and so on if somebody's used to just walking on the Esplanade or a, a normal fire trail, it's much more difficult than that. Um, but again, it's it's quite doable. So that's about a 20 minute walk around um, the rocky shoreline. So it's a decent distance to get around. Um, both of the, the routes have really awesome views up and down the coast. So they're really quite stunning because you're coming off the escarpment and then just looking out to the ocean and, and looking south and north. 
um, which is beautiful. And it's easy to navigate. So the, their signposting, there's actually a whole lot of new signposting, lots of warnings for tourists. Um, so it's an easy track to follow. You don't really need a map. You just need to know where you're going to start. We know it's very nice when you get there. We know it's, uh, you know, how to get down there. But the, uh, the big question is, um, do you go down there? And really the only time that you can do it and should do it is when the conditions are right. And the conditions have to be quite perfect for you to get down there. Um, it's only accessible in low tide and in fact you won't even see anything if it's not low, to low tide. The actual pools sit on a rock shelf which will be submerged, in, the whole thing will be submerged in water if it was anything but low tide. Um, and then just looking at what the tide is going to be like down there isn't enough. There are other factors to, uh, to consider. If there's uh, what the swell is like, um, and before you go, there's a fantastic website through the national parks. Um, all you need to do is type in national parks, figure eight pools, and it will take you straight to a risk forecast. And it actually will give you a risk forecast for the next four days. A lovely, easy to see, color coded risk forecast. And I'm, I'm gonna hold it up from my laptop. Sorry, we're not as tech savvy to share the, share the screen with you maybe as, um, uh, Obviously, you can't read that, I suppose. However, the, all those red markers basically today are saying it's extreme, even though it's saying low tide is at 5.15. And in fact, if you go over the next few days, it is high extreme or high danger, regardless of the fact that it's low tide in the next four days, due to the fact that we're actually having a king tide at the moment. So uh, the low tide might not be as low as it is, is at other times. So definitely look at that and just don't rely on the fact that it's, oh yeah, it says low tide, I can go, because there are a lot of other things to consider. Um, and also when you are going, think about what the tide's going to be like while you're there. You may spend an hour or so out on the rock shelf and swimming around and having a look, Think about your return journey as well, how, what the tide's gonna be like to get you back along that 20 minutes of rock scrambling. Um, and again, even if the conditions are right, even though it might be low tide, there are sets of waves that are coming through and every now and again, you get a rogue wave that is bigger than the others, crashes a little bit harder than the others, that splashes over onto the rock shelf and, um, I have seen this firsthand, people standing on the rock shelf, it didn't look too bad, it was low tide, a rogue ro wave came out, wiped three people out. Thank goodness it wasn't as bad as it could be because you could be swept out to sea with those waves, you could be swept smashing against the rocks and certainly what happened to these three people, they were smashed onto the ground. They had cuts and bruises literally from head to toe, all over their bodies um and it was not a pretty sight and they, and they were the lucky ones so it's it's when the conditions aren't right it's very dangerous when the conditions are right it's a really lovely place to go to and, and just on that when you're on the rock platform there is a you can go towards the the wall of the escarpment and you can get to a safe spot on the wall so it's not like you're on the platform and then in all sorts of trouble there is a safe spot at the back where you can you can sit and I've always recommended people to sit there and just watch for 10 minutes and just observe what the waves are doing um, before you actually venture down onto the rock platform and um, put yourself potentially at danger because the waves, they come over the rock platform and often people are not aware that, oh, they're going to come over that rock yeah. platform because it looks kind of safe and um, looks all pretty, but then yeah, sometimes it turns. They definitely say never turn your back to the uh, ocean, even if it's all looking kind of good and you are going to go down, you know, and go for a dip in the pools or just want to have a little closer look, uh, never turn your back to the ocean. So you've always got that visual on the on the waves that are coming and potentially can get out of the way if a, if a larger wave uh, comes along. So um, 
best time of year to do it. Obviously, really, you can go any time of the year, but I mean, daylight savings, you've got a slightly longer um, longer day to plan. Uh, one thing I did fail to mention before is that road from Garawarra, it's a gated road, so it's only open. They open the gate at seven in the morning and they actually will lock the gate at 8.30 at night. So you can't do a, uh, uh, a sunrise. Um, sunrise walk from Garawarra in because the gate's only open at seven o'clock. If you wanted to do that, it would have to be from Otford. So I'll now just talk about the facilities that are available. At Garawarra Farm, um, where you might start, they, they, there are toilets there um, and Otford not so much. Most of us know Otford, but you can go around to the toilets at Bald Hill. Um, but once you get down into Burning Palms and Figure Eight Pools, there's basically no facilities there at all. So you have to take all your own food and water. Um, and the other thing is mobile reception is quite limited. You'll get some mobile reception on the way down when you're on the, the higher points. But then once you get down there, um, it's very limited um, mobile reception. So some first aid it's pretty important yeah, to, I was going to, say to that. take there. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's what, when I did it just a couple of months ago and I don't know, maybe I had a premonition <laughs> and took my full first aid kit, which I normally wouldn't do a private hike with that. Um, thank goodness I did because those three people had to patch them up and use a lot of my first aid on them. So I would definitely say go with your own, even if it's very easy just to even scratch a knee when you're down there anyway. So it is good to take a reasonable amount of first aid with you. Um, side trips, um, so we've talked about coming from Garrawarra and coming from Otford, but you can also come from Gary Beach. So Gary Beach in the Royal National Park you can drive down to and then that would be approximately at 10 kilometres to figure eight pools and back. It's going to take you about three to four hours and that's just going to incorporate it um, into a really good half day walk and you'll see a whole lot more. Um, heading south from Gary um, and yeah, seeing more of the um, the coast track. So that's another good option. Um, and yeah, the, apart from that, the, you, you could make a loop around if you started um, at Garrett Warra Farm and went down to Figure Eight Pools, came up to Otford and then went along the fire trail um, back to Garrawarra and that's quite a, that's even longer. That's gonna be like a 14 kilometer loop. So there's a couple of different options there if you want to make it something a bit bigger. Yeah. By and large, if you're going from Garrawarra though and straight down, it's about three hours altogether, I suppose. So it's nice, you know, uh, yeah, fairly short walk to get yeah. there. Yeah. I think I just want to finish sort of with talking about the actual pools and what they are like. Um, I think some people get surprised by the pools. Some people think, oh, wow, gosh, they're much smaller than I thought they were because they're not a swimming pool. They're really more, if you think like a plunge pool, they are quite extraordinary natural features and they're quite deep. So you, the main one that's figure eight um, is, well, I think it almost is about to shoulder, about to shoulder height, at least <laughs> if, not, if not over the head, sort of standing height, if you like. Um, and then there's several other smaller, just round pools. There's, there's the one iconic one where you get the photos of people sitting in it and diving in it. Um, but it is like a plunge pool. And then there's a few other ones around that are just small um, circular pools. And then a couple of other sort of more open flat on the rock platform. So really great spot for swimming, you know, and even the rock platform with all the, the sort of wildlife that's marine life that's in those pools. and um, so, you know, take a pair of goggles and, and have a look in the pools. They're, they're quite beautiful. And if you get the right conditions, which is challenging, but if you get the right conditions, yeah, it is really it's a, spectacular. It's a, and it it's is. a lovely multicultural day out because there are, <laughs> there, there, there are literally hundreds of, of people there from all over the world. So yeah. it's actually, it's, it's really nice to see actually when it's, the, when they're all doing the right thing and, yeah. um, and out there and enjoying um, such a really uh, beautiful part of, yeah. um, you know, south of Sydney. That's true. But if you want a quiet walk, then yeah. head yeah. off during the week. Um, and that's, that's great.